We want to talk about the magnetic field uh, associated with a dipole, but first, before we get uh, before we get into that, let's take a look at um, these quantities that are used to characterize fields: the potential or the force. And we know that the potential is equal to the negative of the integral of the force over some displacement path. Path. So this would be the kind of the negative of the work. And if we plug in the, um, uh, the formula for the force for uh, two poles, between two poles, magnetic poles, uh, it would take on this form so that the potential, when we go through this integration here, and we do it relative to a unit test pole, then we get that the potential is equal to the potential of whatever object, whichever pole it is that we're interested in whichever pole we have our test pole close to uh, divided by the distance between the test pole and the pole of that object that we're looking at. So I'd also point out that we're, we're dealing with CGS units, so the magnetic permeability is equal to 1. Uh, you might be looking for that 1 over mu in the expression here, but we, you know, we're typically going to be leaving that out. But don't forget that in CGS units, our life is uh, simplified because mu is approximately equal to 1 uh, in the Earth's uh, atmosphere. So, um, taking a look at the relationship between potential and field intensity, we have uh, H, remember the field intensity is equal to the force divided by the pole strength of the, the, the test pole. And we can easily obtain the field intensity just by taking the negative derivative of the potential. So the negative derivative of the potential was uh, P over R. So we, so, excuse me, so we have um, uh, the derivative of um, uh, P times R to the minus 1 power. So we have minus, minus P over R squared. So we get that. And so the dipole field, uh, when we develop the expression for the dipole field, we're, we'll, we'll be calculating the potential first, and then we'll take the derivative. But we're doing it, we're, when we, as we do this, we're going, to be assume, we're going to assume that our observation point is at a distance r, which is much, much greater than the length of the dipole or the distance separating the two poles of the dipole. So the distance from the observation point to the center of the dipole is r, and it's a lot greater than the distance separating the uh, two poles. So, and for that situation where r is much greater than l, and you see the you see this angle separating the distance over to the negative pole, the distance to the center of the dipole, the distance over to the positive pole, and we've got the dipole length again, L, everything the same, but this angle phi between R plus, R minus, it's going to approach zero as R becomes fairly large. So this, this angle becomes uh, fairly small and we can, uh, we, can, we can ignore it. We can consider that these Lines are all, for the most part, practically parallel to each other, so that the differences in the lengths, r plus and r minus, will simply be plus or minus the projections of L over 2 onto the, onto r in this case. So let's take a look at that in a little bit more detail here. So we, we have r minus. R minus would be equal to R, this distance over here going back to the observation point, way over here somewhere, would be R plus L over 2 times the cosine of theta to the negative pole, and would be R minus L over 2 times the cosine of theta to the positive pole. And we're just subtracting or adding this side of this right triangle. This angle is theta, and um, we can think of that as co-latitude. <clears throat> so uh, this angle theta would go 
to 90 as the point of observation would lie all, along the line which would be perpendicular to the axis of the dipole. So, so we have these two distances then. And remember that if we want to calculate the potential, the potential of the dipole, we just have the uh, pole strength of the negative pole plus the pole strength of the positive pole over the distances to each of those poles. And since the pole strength of the negative pole is the negative of the positive pole, but equal in magnitude, and they both have the same absolute value, we can rewrite this expression up here as just uh, uh, P of the negative pole equal to the magnitude of P of the negative pole equal to P of the positive pole is equal to P. So we have this relationship down here for, for the potential, minus P over R minus plus P over R plus. We substitute for uh, the distances to the negative and the positive pole and calculate the potential of the dipole just by putting these two terms over a common denominator and uh, that common denominator terms canceling out and so on becomes R squared. We end up in the de denominator, we end up with PL times the cosine of theta in the numerator. Remember that PL is the magnetic dipole moment talked about that uh, earlier on. And uh, the field intensity now, so now that we have the potential of the dipole, we can easily get the field intensity, H, just by taking the negative derivative of the potential that we just came up with. And remember, we're just kind of going back to this definition here, that the potential is equal to the negative of the derivative of, and we're just uh, looking at it in terms of the field intensity uh, rather than the force per unit which would be the force per unit pole strength. And so H then is just equal to minus dV dr. So we should keep in mind, because we'll be talking about this later on, because what we have here is the, is we have the magnetic field intensity of the vertical component. So when we're taking this derivative here, we're taking it with respect to R, and on the Earth's surface at least, this would correspond to the radial direction, would correspond to the vertical direction. Or so we we're, we could think of this as the vertical component of the Earth's magnetic field, if you want. If we're thinking of the Earth's magnetic field as being represented just by a big dipole. So if we take that negative derivative, we have negative d dr of PL times the cosine of theta over R squared. And remember, just kind of going back to your calculus here and pulling it out, we have a derivative of r to the minus 2 power with respect to r, and this is just minus 2 over r cubed. So the minus signs cancel out. We get that the vertical component of the Earth's main magnetic field or of the dipole field or of the radial component of, of, the di of an arbitrary dipole would be equal to 2 times the magnetic dipole moment times the cosine of the co-latitude over Cube. Now, something that you have to keep in mind here, just comparing the uh, field intensity, you know, thinking of the analogy between field intensity, uh, magnetic field intensity, and acceleration due to gravity. The acceleration due to gravity varies as R squared, but the magnetic field intensity then of the dipole, which is the basic uh, component of the magnetic field, varies as Cube. So it's dropping off a lot more quickly. Uh, the dipole field will drop off a lot more quickly than the uh, monopole field. So again, this is uh, thinking, you know, when we're thinking in terms of the Earth's magnetic field, we think of this as the vertical component of that uh, field. So <clears throat> we have the vertical component. So what about the horizontal component? So we'd be taking a derivative out along the surface. And uh, so we might be taking a derivative in this direction, or at a point tangent to the to the surface. So that would be a minus dV dipole uh, with respect to a differential element out along the Earth's surface. And that turns out to be, and sometimes they don't explain this in text, uh, that derivative is equivalent to minus 1 over R times d the potential of the dipole with respect to theta. So where does that come from? Where does this RD theta term come from? 
where does this operator, whenever R D theta come from? And so to understand where it comes from, we just come from this arc length, that relationship here, and we can see that ds is equal to rd theta. So we're simply substituting for the operator, which is the derivative out along the surface, along a line tangent, anywhere on this uh, circle. Uh, the derivative in that direction would be equivalent to the derivative of r times the derivative of theta. Okay, so we'll wrap up with a simple problem, and that problem is to determine the potential and the radial component of the dipole field intensity for the problem as outlined here. So we have a, a dipole. It's L is 40 centimeters. R is 200 centimeters. So it's not really, really far away. Maybe, maybe we should go out to 400 centimeters, but just for the purpose of calculation, we'll assume that R is 200 centimeters, that the co-latitude, again, you know, I haven't shown the angle here, but it's equal to 70 degrees, and that the pole strength is 5 ohms. So how would we calculate the potential? Well, we would just come back to this basic equation for the potential, which would be equal to the dipole moment P times L times the cosine of theta over the distance to the center of the dipole squared. So we have 5 ups times the length of the dipole times cosine of theta, or 70 degrees in this case, over 200 uh, centimeters squared. So we have 200 squared centimeters squared as the units. And plugging in, we get 68.4 ups centimeters over 4 times 10 to the 4th centimeters squared. This would give us 0 0.0017 ups per centimeter. So that would be our potential. Would be in terms of ups, pole strength per centimeter. And then if we want to calculate the intensity in the radial direction, then we no, because we, had, we took the derivative of this, and we end up with 2PL, or 2 times the, the uh, uh, dipole moment, times uh, cosine of theta over r cubed, and that gives us 136.8 ups centimeters over 8 times 10 to the 6 centimeters cubed, which gives us 0 0.000017 ups per centimeter squared, and you'll recognize this unit as the Earth state. So since there are 10 to the 5th nanoteslas in Earth state, and since we're usually collecting data, we're measuring our data in nanoteslas or gammas, which are equivalent, then this would be 1.7 nanoteslas. Now, you just have to remember that, that, that uh, with a lot of the, the magnetometers that you're using, they, the uh, scale would probably get readings um, uh, at the nanotesla or the gamma level. So this would be a very small anomaly and could be easily obscured by noise in the data. So uh, with that, we'll conclude and um, hope you'll join us, uh, join us next time. Thank you.